Hello, I'm Dr. William Schlosser of Washington State University School of the Environment. This is my classroom. I share videos of deer at Kamiak Butte. We have both white-tailed deer, Odocolius virginianus, and this scene with mule deer, Odocolius hemionis. They live together on the Butte habitats, but their infrequent breeding makes hybrid offspring even when it results in live birth. The offspring cannot reproduce successfully with mates of the same genetic hybridization. Sterility is their misfortune. But hybridization is not the topic of this video today. We will listen to how and why deer talk is made. Deer are vocal and at times they can emit many different sounds. These include a snort, grunt, and even a bleat. Sometimes they sound out through distress. It might be a fawn feeling danger who lets out a brawl. It might be a doe calling her young ones to let out a shrilling swizzle sound. That call brings them all in. <laughs> Listen to your mother! Deer not only use their sense of smell to detect predators, but also to communicate with one another. This deer-to-deer -deer communication relies on a network of localizations where deer spread their scent, like on the ground and against trees. They disperse a special group of chemicals called pheromones. This is their calling card, to mark their territory and their presence in it. The affection deer show each other is their way of communication and interaction. Undoubtedly, deer care for each other, keeping watch while the others graze. The affection toward each other does not preclude the bucks from battling fiercely for the honor of being the female's mate. The guys will fight about it, but the ladies decide when their time is right. We join this white-tailed buck deer walking in the early morning of 10 November. He is moving with stealthy purpose. His nose is down, and his great nighttime vision seeks doe companionship. It is the time of the rut, Akamiak Butte. That means this is the breeding season. If the reason for the season is not with you, then move along. About a week later, a different buck walks on the same trail. His antlers are of a different design. This time, it is late in the evening. Dominant bucks will use short grunts to stake out their territory and intimidate rivals. Bucks will use grunts to communicate a general contact call. They grunt out as an announcement. Ah, did you hear it? I will rewind this one. Turn up the volume. Now, listen for it again. There it was. Did, did you hear it? Not only once, but twice. He is on the move and hoping there is a doe listening for a party call. This is the buck grunt we can best verify only when we hear it. Try to remember this buck's antlers. He is different from the buck we saw a moment ago, and he is different from the next one too. This is about uh, two weeks later and only about a hundred feet to the east. We are watching a doe in estrus. The sound of a buck grunting is quite unique. Bucks sometimes use short grunts when they are chasing does. Some people refer to these as trailing grunts. It's unmistakable when you hear them. It's one of the most exciting sounds in the woods. It means a buck is coming through fast and hot and on the trail of a doe. Ah, did, did you hear that? Here it comes from right behind and below the camera. He knows where he is headed. Let's zoom in for a closer look. The sound is created by the deer forcefully expelling air from their nose. She is in a small gully, just out of our angle of sight. He keeps looking for competition and maybe another doe. He makes another call out for her. He knows exactly where she is. Deer blow or snort is made when a deer forcefully expels air through its nostrils like a greatly magnified sneeze. A snort wheeze is produced when a deer rapidly exhales through his nostrils. These are similar to an alarm blow, but can be more drawn out. A deer blows when it detects danger at a distance. These blows are drawn out whooshes. 
made once or repeated several times. The whoosh sound is created when the expelled air flutters the closed nostrils. Deer frequently stomp a front hoof to alert the other deer, or attempt to lure any intruder into exposing itself. Whenever an alarmed doe stomps her forefoot, this also lays invisible spots of interdigital scent. The deer's body is designed for survival, and there are many features it uses to stay alive. All deer within the area react to the warning signs. We moved forward to May already, leaving winter events aside. Here our mule deer are putting on some layers. <laughs> it is time to feast on green grasses and forbs. We see one doe deer here, and she is still trying to shed off her winter ratty cloak. She needs some nutrients to build up the sheen. Just one month ahead to June and see this velvety rack. I remember this guy. He is a yearling, still hanging around with his family group. His mom still leads the way. We hear some birds in the area, but not a lot of deer calls are being sent out. Think about that one. We are in the season when fawns were born around the beginning of May, making them only a month or less old. Would you want to make lots of noise so that predators can hear? I think not. So their calls are selective and given only with a purpose. Just five days later, same place, and this is that young buck's mother herding up her crew. Listen. That is the swizzle sound I mentioned before. She is calling out to her new fawns. She had two this spring and they are hanging out on the butte's green glen. The swizzle called out once, then twice. This is our doe to let out a shrilling swizzle sound to call in her tribe. That call brings them all in. Hey, listen to your mother. Now, look who's coming in from behind. That is the young buck yearling who is still hangs out with his mother. He has some new siblings on his crew. When they make a call, the normal, self-imposed reaction is to keep moving. It was not only their crew who heard that swizzle. I have spent some time on vocalizations, but let us shift over to talk about sight. You have heard me talking about near-infrared light used by these cameras, but some wildlife can see in this realm as well. It looks like the ground is illuminated by this camera, but that is only illuminated in the infrared spectrum. Consider what deer can see. Deer eyes have only two cones. Uh, these are the photoreceptors that sees color as we describe it. Humans have red, green, and blue cones. That is our primary color discussions we all had while we were still young. This defines what we can see, and therefore we think that is important. Well, deer have only green and blue cones. They are dichromatic, so deer are essentially red-green colorblind. Specifically, they have protonopia. They see reds and oranges as shades of green. My favorite orange forester's vest is seen by cervids as green, but other humans tell me I stand out. <laughs> Mission accomplished. In humans, dichromatism is a problem when driving because you cannot see red car lights or red traffic lights. They do not stand out. Having protonope vision also means that deer are more sensitive to items reflected in the blue light spectrum. So those blue jeans stick out like a neon glow to deer and elk. Ha! Ah, I who knew my blue jeans were announcing my presence in the forest? Oh. Researchers have found that as well as having only two types of cones to see color, deer also have lower concentration of them. Their genetically adaptive response is seen by having a greater concentration of rods in their eyes. Rods are the photoreceptor cells that work in less intense light. Genetic adaptations created additional rods, which has resulted in their expanded sight reception in the near-infrared spectrum. That is matched with pupils that let in more light, making their night vision even better. When your senses define your success or failure in the natural world, successful adaptations define life or death. Watch this white-tailed deer doe walking along this familiar butte trail. 
She does not sing out whistles like a lead cowell did when she was calling the migration march. Miss Doe is using a familiar heads-down pose. Sure, she is feeding, but she also sniffs pheromones to know who has passed through. Watch her back. Do you see her sister? Yeah, right there behind her, walking along the crest of the butte. They know of each other and how they are not at risk. No need to call out and attract attention. The whole subject of deer vocalization is fascinating. Scientists want to study and understand what deer are doing and how they are communicating with each other. Mule deer and white-tailed deer communicate as does to fawns and fawns to does and with bucks. At certain times of the year, deer will communicate through vocalization more than at other times of the year. Remember, when they vocalize, the announcement goes out to everyone with ears. Parsimony of verbal expression is part of deer successes. Carnivores are listening too. Obviously, the rut is the time of year that bucks are going to be quite vocal. The testosterone is peaked and they want to vocalize about it. When fawns are born in the spring, there is a tremendous amount of vocalization going on between does and fawns, and that's key because the doe is teaching her fawn what to do as a reaction to what they experience. Think about that one as define and discuss with example. Several examples are made, but examples are reinforced through vocalizations and even a hoof stomp. Doe deer do a familiar amount of bleeding and grunting but probably not quite as much as most people think. Bucks, on the other hand, in the fall season, make a lot of vocalizations. That testosterone-filled guy makes noise for everyone to hear. Loud and proud. White-tailed deer and mule deer sound it out, but each species does it a bit differently. Cross-species buck confrontations are not seen. Bucks save their energy for when and where it matters. When a doe gets near estrus, both species oftentimes will make a bleat sound. We watched as bucks grunted out a sound seeking a doe in estrus. The most important aspect for you is to listen, look, and understand what the deer see, hear, and what their sounds mean. Be observant to learn from their examples.